Your source for everything paranormal. Para X. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. And blessed be, heed the words I call to thee. Honor the old ones in name and deed. Hearken not to others' greed. Pray to the moon when she is round. Luck with you shall then abound. Respect the earth, the sky, the sea. As you will it, so moot it be. Welcome to Stirring the Cauldron. On the Para X Radio Network. And now, here's your host, Nala Bro- Hey, Mary Mead, everybody, and welcome to Stirring the Cauldron. Um, we've got an interesting show tonight. We've got um, author of ghost books and tarot and oracle decks and paranormal and sci-fi and fantasy and mystery and romance. Um, Dinah Roseberry is here. <laughs> She's also a senior editor for Red Feather, Mind, Body, Spirit, and she for publishing Paranormal and UFO Lines. And she's been my editor on all my books and The Witch's Oracle, for which she gets a purple heart at the end of all this. Um, and she's also helping me with the new edition of The Witch's Oracle, which has some wonderful new additions. Um, Dinah is also the founder of the UFO Management Group on Facebook, and tonight she's going to enlighten me about the multiverse. And we'll also be talking about her new book, which deals with the multiverse, called Three Months to Change, which I just finished reading and really enjoyed. Um, Dinah, although it's not been so long since we've spoken, because we've been putting the final edits and stuff and we're friends and all that, but it's been a very long time since you've been on the show. So welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, I needed I needed some new information, and the multiverse is kind of, you know, kind of new to me, and I've known of your interest in UFOs and the like, but we've never spoken about the multiverse, so fill me in. Where did you first get interested in that? Well, I, I think... I think we really have been talking about this all these years, but we didn't have a real name for it. Um, I, I mean, you and I have talked about the paranormal and we've talked about other dimensions and, and uh, all kinds of thing relate, things related to ghosts and the planes that they're on and, and a, a lot of different paranormal things. Um, about when when I started this book, I started using those same kinds of concepts. It's a romance novel, and I thought, let me put in some really cool paranormal uh, things into it. And I was um, working on a piece involving portals with it, and I decided to contact Paul and Ben Enu because I just edited their book, Beyond the Paranormal, and they talked about the multiverse. And as I was reading that. I thought, oh, my God, 
this explains everything, every question I've ever had in the paranormal world. And here I've been thinking I've never heard of it before, but it's really a real thing and some and science related. So that's how I started. Yeah, well, it is kind of science related because, you know, I always do my homework like a good host should. <laughs> and I found several definitions of what the multiverse is. <clears throat> and the most succinct one of all says that um, advances in physics over the past 30 years have led some physicists and cosmologists to the mind-boggling conclusion that the universe we inhabit is just one of many in existence, um, perhaps an infinite number, and it includes parallel universes where you will never get a parking ticket, where you, <clears throat> sorry, where, where you can win a million-dollar lottery, um, in truth, where you have a different name, where Germany won World War II, where dinosaurs still roam the Earth, and where the Earth never formed in the first place. So it is really kind of mind-boggling, isn't it? Yes, because there that means that there's some place in the universe where I'm still married to my ex-husband, and I I just don't <laughs> think that's that's good for anybody in any universe. And I'm making fun, but but you're exactly yeah, yeah. right. You know, there's we don't. It's out there, and it's been out there for many, many years, and we've just been kind of skirting around the edges of it when we've been thinking about our paranormal experiences. Mm -hmm. Now, I got a little bit confused about it here and there, and is are there any differences between different dimensions and the multiverses? Is you I have not a clue. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, you know, I... From the way Paul and Ben talk about it, they mm -hmm. seem to believe, and uh, and they've done their research too, um, and they seem to believe that all these things are one, and they everything involves the multiverse, and that kind of makes sense because you know we're talking about other dimensions. Okay, we say other dimensions, that means other places. Um, in our minds, when we're working with the written word or our paranormal, another dimension is another place and possibly another time. Well, that's the multiverse as well. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, when people ask me what it is, I think about if you take a bunch of Earths and you kind of like push them together and they touch each other in like little places, those are openings into the multiverse, into different universes. And that's how uh, I see as people, uh, concepts, ghosts, if you will, um, mm -hmm. are all coming through. I mean, there may even be a religious context to this. Um, you know, where the god, the gods, the goddesses, where all of these different entities are in different places. The angels, we talk about levels of, of heaven and um, other dimensions where UFOs are and other planets. What if it's all these varied multiverse places? And, mm -hmm. I, and I think that answers all the questions. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it seems to cover all bases. Now, I found three arguments for the multiverse. So people who are very scientifically minded will enjoy hearing this. I was like, oh, okay. But I think, I think it, it, it's three very good arguments that there is one. Um, the first one is the Big, big Bang Theory. <clears throat> and it said, you know, that's like 13.8 billion years ago. And it's thought to have been triggered by a random fluctuation in what physicists call the quantum foam, which is a maelstrom of virtual particles that pop in and out of existence. But while some physicists believe this blip and the ensuing inflation of the universe constitute a unique event, others say that this could have been many, many events leading to very, a very big amount of multiple universes. Now, that's the first ar argument. The second argument is for um, the string theory, which holds that matter is ultimately composed not of particles, but of unimaginable small vibrating strings or loops of energy. That is a system of like equations that explains why our universe has the exact properties that it does. And some other theor theorists argue that each of these solutions describes a different universe, each with its own physical properties. So there you go again. Now, 
The third argument for the multi multiverse comes from the quantum theory, which leads to a number of existential possibilities that defy common sense. In what's known as the many worlds interpretation of quantum theory, which got its start in the 50s, um, it has recently seen renewed interest. The universe essentially splits in two each time there's a so-called quantum event. So in the world of quantum theory, for example, a radioactive particle decays and doesn't decay during any given period of time, and each results uh, 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 result playing out in a separate universe. So with such quantum events happening more or less continuously, as the argument goes, the number of universes keep increasing. So, I mean, yeah, that's all kind of mind-boggling, but that's the scientific um, explanation. And those are three fairly decent arguments that there is such a thing as multiverse. And yet, and yet, so many people in the world will not even consider it. Why do you think that is? Because there are some people that just have blinders on about everything, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I know. And I, I think, I think you know, we could go into a whole uh, discussion about conspiracy theories and things like that, too, um, that people are afraid of this information. It is so alien um, to people to think that there are other um, universes that have people similar to them or... Um, situations similar to them. They're so frightened by that kind of thing, and they think that it goes against everything that they believe in. So therefore, they say, well, it can't be then. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of stuff in the paranormal world, at least for me, in the paranormal world, when you yourself have an experience, and then somebody around you or somebody anywhere starts to tell you that you didn't really have that experience. Um, I've learned to kind of step back and say, you know what, I know what I know. But when so, so many people do know how it really is, but so many others just don't want to believe facts, it, it becomes, it, it's a burden. Yeah, it can be. And, and I think some people are afraid of things that they can't really explain or put in their hand or whatever. Um of course, in the chat room now, um, they're talking about Schrodinger's universe, and I don't know a with whole the cat way, with the cat. Yeah, yeah, I was the say, cat. Okay. That's what I know. But let me look. I just grabbed it. Hang on. So Schrodinger's cat is a thought experiment, sometimes described as a paradox, devised by Austrian physicist Edwin Schrodinger in 1935, and it illustrates what he saw as a problem of the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics applied to everyday objects. Well, anything with a cat in it has to be good and valid. That's <laughs> what I say. So, yeah. <clears throat> but, I mean, it, you know, it talking about multiverses to people is like talking about ghosts to people or, you know, Bigfoot. or I mean, they're just people that are going to listen and people that aren't going to listen. And I guess eventually, in the end, we find out. <laughs> I, you know, it's hard to... It's hard to say what is and what isn't, but it's what you believe, and that's what works for you, and that's very important, too. And I think, I think too, that's where uh, fiction comes into uh, mm -hmm. play. You and I both kind of know this. When you, when you take what you know and you apply that into any fictional field that you're writing, mm -hmm. um, of course, you're doing the what if and all the things that writers do and that kind of thing, but it also... Um, gets the audience used to some of these thoughts so that when theories are put forth, they can go, aha, I've heard about that. <laughs> yeah. Ser you know, seriously. Um, and, and then they're a little bit more open to it sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, not all the time, because I mean, people who like, for example, uh, you're in my book, some, um, someone who's not interested in the paranormal or fantasy, or they're not going to want to read our books. Yeah, but those yeah. that are, are going to learn something from them, and they could actually go off and do some research. And, you know, I, I just, I heard that recently um, on my new book, so The Soul Obsession, um, mm -hmm. Soul Con yeah, Connection. Somebody wrote, um, after she read that, she said, well, I'm going to have to go back and read Collie Wobbles now, you know, because she liked the 
the first the second book, but she skipped the first. And so when she got through writing, uh, reading Collywobble, she wrote me a note and she said, you know, this is amazing because it's fiction. You're telling a really good story, but you're also introducing people to witchcraft in a good way. Right. You know, you're, you're teaching, but you're not teaching. But she says, I learned a lot about witchcraft from reading this fiction book. So, yeah, it, it's what you put into it. People will kind of remember and then down the line, it'll kind of wake them up. Yeah, and that's the same thing that happened to me way back years ago when the Jurassic Park book first came out. When I finished reading that, I felt like I was a paleontologist. I mean, I really felt like I knew some stuff. <laughs> so I learned, you know, so fiction fiction has a definite place in a nonfiction world, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really does. Um, and we're going to talk about your book in a minute, but I, I just popped up something into my head about different multiverses and things. Um and, and because you're so ghosty oriented anyway as well. Um, so do you think that ghosts, for example, are in a different multiverse but can travel back and forth to ours? I do. I didn't before I started working and, you know, learning about it here. But, you know, everybody would talk about uh, the ghosts on the next level before they go to, you know, they have unfinished business you hear or they have something they want to talk or they come back and see you or or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, But if they're in another multiverse, it makes perfect sense where they are and when they come back. Now, I've, I've heard in Paul and Ben's book that they, on other multiverse places, they may know a little bit more. They may be more open-minded and know a little bit more about it in some, in some ways. So, therefore, um, some of the ghost stuff that we see, you know, it, it seems to have purpose when they, when they send us messages and that kind of thing. Where are they sending their messages from? There's certainly not another dimension here that we know about that is actually something that we can put our hand out and touch. It's somewhere else. So where is it? Is it, and that goes back to your question earlier, is it a dimension? Is it a multiverse? There are people who are very religious who say it's the first level or the second level. You know, everybody's got a level on that side to mm-hmm. heaven. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to look at it, but the multiverse just answers it all. So I think yes. My thinking now is that, yes, it's a multiverse. Okay, so here's, this, here's another $64,000 question. Now, I'm, and you know as well as I do, people can astral travel. Now, is astral travel another dimension, which kind of seems to be that it would, but is it a multiverse? And then, um, well, let's start with that. Hmm. Well... I think multiverse again. It just answers everything. Um, I think that, you know, but you don't want to mix up dreaming with astral projection. Right, right. Uh, But if you look at the astral projection in that your soul is leaving and traveling someplace else, uh, why wouldn't it be going to someplace like that i mean there's no place here or maybe there is i don't know um i think i think it's a connection to another place and another place means the multiverse okay so wherever we travel to whatever multiverse it is we don't go in body we can only go in spirit correct i don't know that i i mean i Uh. think i i think that um I think I think that's true, but I certainly am finding out a lot of stuff now. But and you've heard, you've heard about people showing up uh, or being taken by aliens and things like that, mm-hmm. and their bodies are gone and they're just gone, and then all yeah, of a sudden yeah. they're back. You know, um, so that makes me think that that you can go this other way, but I don't think that we have the ability to do that. Because we don't have the knowledge base. Boy, I'm really making stuff up here as I go along. These are just my thoughts. Yeah, well, that's all I'm asking for. And you have good thoughts. I trust your (laughs) thoughts. Um, So would maybe people eventually be able to travel from place to place to place, do you think? But, But see, then you'd have to know that those places were there. 
Oh, and yes. we hear about multiverses, but we don't hear like um, there is a specific destination. Like, you know, we're going three multiverses to the right, you know, next to the whatever. Well, I think they have to touch, don't you? Don't you think that makes sense that they have to touch in some place? So if they don't touch, you can't go there. You can't just like hop planets. Well, I'm only going by the banner I made for you, and it was a picture of the multiverses, and they were in a like line, separate. but they weren't touching. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I, I personally think they have to. Touch, you have to touch it. I see it differently than that picture that you put up for the banner. The way mm-hmm. I see it, picture bubbles blowing. You know, mm-hmm. you blow bubbles and they all kind of, um, they're all touching or not touching, but they're all congregated there in front of you mm-hmm. and some are off to the side. You know what I mean? They're like masses yeah, yeah. of them. Right. The places that they touch, that is a connection to, they connect each other. But if the one wants to be connected to the one way out on the other side, if it doesn't touch, it can't connect. Okay. Because, you know, when you do seances, I mean, you can hold hands or you, some people don't. So, you know, I'm just, it, I don't think there's a right or wrong way. But No, uh, no, I don't either. I, and I don't know. I'm just kind of contemplating, speculating. Yeah, which is a good thing to do. I mean, we have to. Um, you have to speculate. You have to have imagination. You have to see where you're going and stuff. Um, somebody said, use a map to see them, then portal to physically travel to it. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 mind-boggling mm-hmm. in general, I mean, to think about this. But so, all right, so do you think, now there's two theories on Bigfoot. Two theories are, one, Bigfoot's an alien, pop and go as he wants. Or secondly, Bigfoot is a universe popper hopper. I think he's a multiverse creature. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's why we never see any um, real solid evidence because it moves back and forth. Um, I don't know why they come back and forth. I think they're more intelligent than what we think they are. Mm-hmm. I'm not a Bigfoot expert, but I do believe that it is multiverse related. Otherwise, we'd have more evidence. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that they know that they 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 probably know. All right, if they they can multiverse hop. That um, out here we have a lot of people that would want to kill one and hang it on their you know, yeah. dense wall. So yeah. I think they know that they're prey, actually. Yeah. And and can hop back and forth as, as a lot of people can, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, but it, it's just kind of a, it's a weird thing that maybe other creatures and other beings and stuff can can universe hop and, and we can't. Now, do you think time travel is multiverse? I do. I do. I think absolutely. I mean, for all the same reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, Do we do it here with our, you know, I I don't know that we do, although there have been people who have said that they're from the future and, you know, and they've built uh, platforms around that kind of thing. I don't know. I've not met any of them. Uh, But I do believe that time, all time is at the same time. It's um, not linear like, you know, like we perceive it here and now. Um, I think it all happens at the same time and it happens in the multiverse. And then the connections uh, would allow a time difference or or I use this in my um, my romance, Three Months to Change, um, an actual time displacement. I believe that's related to the multiverse, too. Okay, well, let's let's talk about your book because um, reading your book opened my eyes about something I wrote in one of mine. Mm-hmm. But um, <laughs> Three Months to Change um, deals with parallel universes, um, shapeshifters, um, and all kinds of things that drew me in. And to be honest, I finished it in record time. Um, and that that's, that's a big compliment because I've been really pokey about reading lately. But... So, so 
let's let's talk a little bit about it. Okay. Well, the story's about Lenora, and she is a young woman who is about to turn 25, and she's going through some very strange changes. And one of them involves developing this protective sheen on her body that protects her from anything or any person or anything that might try to harm her. But she doesn't understand it, and she can't explain it, and she can't control it. So she's like in the dark about the whole thing. So I have it beginning that way when she's about to be beaten up by her ex-boyfriend. And then from there, we move forward into her becoming more powerful and getting more powers uh, that are also uh, strange to her. And she can't explain those either. And then she becomes involved with a wolf shapeshifter family. So I got, I, you know, I love the wolf <laughs> shapeshifter things. Yeah, and yeah. I, I involved that. And that was really, that was really a fun piece to this, I think. Um, so we've got some uh, wolves and some cats. And then the actual love interest is a man of a different sort. Um, his name is Frankie. And it's a struggle for her to find out who or what he really is. Then I got some chompers in there, and I don't want to s- send out spoilers, uh, but they're, they're, they're pretty nasty creatures. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's just basically a tale of eye-opening shock at what someone in love will accept beyond the normal of normal things that uh, come to the heart. Um, so her full change is supposed to happen when she turns 25, and that's three months from where the story begins, thus my title. And there's mystery, there's romance, it's it's a romp, there's friends, ghosts, shapeshifters, and the multiverse. Um, just got a question that I'm, I think I can answer in the chat room. Um, Kat wants to know, are they wolves who shift into other shapes or people who shift into other shapes? They are people who shape into wolves, mm-hmm. Except, or wolves, or wolves yeah. that shape and in, shift into people. Well, yeah. See, I was just going to answer that for her, and then that's what came up. You know, at first I was oh, people that shift into wolves, and then I'm thinking, well, no, I didn't write the book. Maybe it's the other way around. So it could be right. Yeah, what she what she finds is that she um, her mother had had an affair with um, someone who was a shapeshifter, and her mother was a normal woman, and she split with the baby. Didn't want to have anything to do with all this. Well, the mother dies of cancer, and and never gets the opportunity to tell her daughter about this. Mm-hmm. So in the beginning, you find that's how she becomes involved because now she's changing, and they find her. Mm-hmm. Now, in the book, you um, came up with a vortex, which yes. had to do with the chompers. Mm-hmm. And so I'm reading that and I'm thinking that sounds vaguely familiar. And I didn't really think of anything right away, except because I couldn't figure out why it sounded so familiar. But mm-hmm. as I kept reading, all of a sudden the, the V8 knock on my head came. And in my Collie Wobbles book, I have a scene where these people go into a house um, and there's some strange noises coming from the bedroom. And when they go in there, there is a vortex that actually sucks them in, takes them to another place. Now I know it's a different universe, (laughs) parallel universe or whatever. And it's completely opposite of where they are. And, you know, I, well, you know, Diana, I got a hold of you as soon as I thought about that and said, Jeez, I didn't know I wrote about this. You know, we're talking about multiverses, and I hadn't a clue that that's what I wrote about. Now, let's go back even further. When you and I first became acquainted back nearly 15 years ago, when you were writing about your California ghost books, and I was working on animal communications back then, and your dog, Callie, was seeing a portal slash vortex in your front room or your back room there. And that was where I was first introduced to that kind of concept. Now, did did you and I know back then? We were talking about it daily. You know, this thing in the back room that your dog was seeing and it was it was green and turning like a tornado. And 
um, really kind of scary. And your dog was really freaked out about it. And we were talking about it quite a bit. That was my first introduction to, I mean, I'd heard of vortexes and portals and seen them on movies and TVs, but my first exposure to really something like that. And we kind of bonded over all that stuff going on then, if you recall. Yeah, we did. Well, a lot of things. Um, But I didn't know about, you told me about the vortex that the dog was seeing. I mean, I had no clue, but, you know, there's certain parts of that house that were really, really scary. And, and, and <laughs> I'm surprised that Dinah is still talking to me, everybody, because the first, <laughs> the first ghost of Hollywood book I sent to her, oh, she yeah. will swear on a stack of Bibles that I just, it wasn't just the manuscript that I sent to her. You want to, you want to explain that? Well, you know, when uh, an author sends me a manuscript and it starts to go into my, my workflow, um, I was working on an edit and I'm in my office And one of her stories, if you haven't read the story, you need to get the book. But one of her story was about uh, a victim of a death. Well, this turned out to be somebody who was super serious about seeing this book come to fruition. And the reasoning behind it uh, is a spoiler, so I, I can't tell you. But but it was this ghost was in my office, and I couldn't see anything. And back then, I was just learning, so I hadn't had a lot of experiences. I just knew that while I worked on her manuscript, my office felt heavy, and I was so sick on my stomach. Finally, one morning, I got up out of my chair, and I said, okay, Frank, that's it. You've got to get out of my office. If you want to see what I'm doing, you may stand by the door, but you're making me sick on my stomach and I can't work. And after that, they left me alone. And I'm like, okay, there is something to this business. (laughs) Uh, And then more things, more things around you, everything around you, everything was haunted around you. Yeah, well, I, you know, I didn't mean to send you, you know, Coxie's army of, of <laughs> spirits or something, but that one particular Frank was some, that was an attachment I had after an investigation. Yeah. Even though I took, I did protection and everything. Sometimes, you know, you can't do enough. But Dinah called me and she says, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I feel bad because I didn't know her well enough to laugh. You know, I mean, it was just like. I didn't do that. I didn't mean to do that. But, um, you know, first with, with Callie, because, you know, as an animal communicator, you see things that I didn't see. And then, of course, um, you got very friendly with my bird, Bentley, um, <laughs> who saw things in the house, too. So, Donnie, yeah. you've, you know, the, again, you did deserve a purple heart for being friends well, it with was, me. It was, it was eye-opening, and I learned so much from from that period of my life, and you were such a heavy part of that, and you also introduced my light beings to me, and I mean, there was just one thing after another, and you know, and she lives in California, and I live in Pennsylvania, so we're not like around the corner, but we became so close with this, all this stuff, because things kept happening to us. Yeah, and, and really strange things, and, and now, I mean... Even so, you know, I I read your book and I'm thinking, ah, multiverse. I wrote that too. I mean, (laughs) yeah, we're connected. It it doesn't stop. I mean, but it's really kind of amazing. And you know, I'm a big fan of Doctor Who, and people know this. And so the time travel and the and all that stuff, um, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, I certainly believe that there are multiverses. I can't believe that we're the only universe in the whole universe and the whole i I don't think that we're you know we're getting it exactly right or anything like that like anything that i say is exact or anything that the scientists say are exact i i think that we've got a lot to learn and then we're in uh our infancy of all this but i think that i think that i have dogs barking sorry (laughs) in this Um, universe yeah yeah (laughs) but but i think that once um Oh, oh let them bark. So oh, sorry. That's all right. We're um, animal oriented. That's cool. Yeah. But once I, I think that once we get moving forward, and, and it may not be in our lifetime, I think that people are going to find that a lot of things that people thought now, we almost have it. Um, 
Chaswiz in chat said that her friend's cat used to disappear through a portal door between their bedroom door and the kitchen door and then reappeared in the backyard. There you go. Mm-hmm. It's like an apport in a way. Uh, yeah. But, but, but and what a, is that? That's a whole nother story. I mean, I never thought about that until now. The apports and, um, and I've had that happen to me with an apport. Why? I don't know. It was just crazy. I'm no sense going into that story. But could that be something from the multiverse as well? Um, of course, you know, you, you look at like the poltergeist movies with things dropping to the ceilings and all that and the conjuring movies, mm-hmm. you know, all the people that work on all those movies and, and write all these books, they all have an interest and a knowledge and a research base that they start with. So, yes, there's fiction built into these things. There's definitely fiction in the mind. I certainly don't know any shape-shifting men, okay? I I just don't. Um, And I don't know anybody that goes through time either. Uh, But I sure have done a lot of research about this. So there's a piece of it that's real. So why wouldn't that be the case in just about everything we're exposed to? Mm -hmm. And, and again... Through fiction, some things become more believable, or at least maybe not even believable, but more possibly possible, if that's yes. a better yeah. way to yeah. put it. Yes. You know, anybody with an open mind is going to be able to experience things. And this goes for psychic phenomenon, this goes for spirits, this goes for everything. If you open up your mind big enough, um, things will happen. And, and that's the beauty of magic. That's what we talk about. That, you know, anything is possible if you just believe. And Well, I tell people whenever, um, you know, I start talking about my UFOs and aliens and that kind of stuff, and um, they start listening to me, I say, okay, be careful now. You're going to see one. You're going to have something happen to you. And the next thing you know, it might be a month or two later, but then they become believers. Or at least consider believing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that's all any of us ask is just not have the blinders on. Yes. Just open yourself up to possibilities. It doesn't mean that you have to agree. We've all heard things that we just go, oh, no, that's like no way kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, no, no, and, no. I don't want no huge spider people coming down here. You yeah, know? there you go. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but in order to experience new things, have new experiences – you have to keep an open mind. And, you do. You know, I mean, yeah, you have to have the walls up in certain situations. I mean, you know, like um, somebody was talking about divination on a different show tonight. And they were talking about, oh, how bad Ouija boards are and, you know, how um, you get all these weird things coming through and all that. And I kind of wrote back and said, any form of divination can be dangerous. It's not, you know, whether you're doing an EVP or you've got a pendulum or you're doing automatic writing or channeling or whatever. Anything, just as simple as an easy pendulum. When you're communicating with the other side, one thing is as dangerous as the other. The difference is using your head and knowing what you're doing. Right, you know? and it's a, it's a tool. Mm-hmm. Now think about it in reverse. Suppose there's somebody on the other side on, the, on another multiverse and they're thinking they're going to get information from us. And it so happens that when they touch it, touch us, it's in a dream. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, or in our meditation. Now, my meditation for the last month, every single meditation, I've had a pirate ship on the ocean, a slit in the sky open up onto another dimension or multiverse, two UFOs plastered up there like there are paintings on the sky, I have no clue what it is, but it's there every meditation I do. So is there somebody on the other side asking questions? And I'm giving them that as the answer. You know, and they're on the other side saying, oh, you know what? It's evil. (laughs) It's over there. She this person that we're getting to or this this being is an evil being who uh, has somebody that looks like Johnny Depp on on a pirate ship. Mm hmm. I mean, yeah. it's, it goes both ways. If the, if we're in the multiverse and we're looking at things coming here, they're looking too. Yeah. And Kat just made a good point in chat again. She said live people could be dangerous, but that doesn't mean you never speak to any. True. You know, so that, that's a great simile. Um, because, yeah, 
You don't have to believe in everything. You don't have to try everything. Just have to keep an open mind. And curiosity. Curiosity is amazing. Um, It leads you places. I mean, if you just kind of let your mind wander or you allow yourself to think just more than just what the obvious is, you know, look behind the obvious, it'll drag you way deeper into so many things. I mean, there's people now probably that are listening or or will listen to the podcast that never gave um, a multiverse any thought. You know, I hope because, they do now. I hope they do. Yeah. Well, I think they will because it's intriguing. And, you know, uh, with an open mind, you just want to learn a little bit more. I, that's why today, I mean, yeah, I, I know when we talk, we don't usually do a lot of questions and pr- do a lot of preparing. But I got curious about the multiverse, and that's why I did the homework. And that's why I looked at those three theories and a couple of other things because first I just kind of wanted to see what the definition of multiverse was, if there was one significant definition or if, if there may be many. But then it made me keep digging and looking, and then I came across the, the three arguments kept on going. I mean, it was it's just one of those things. And learning is really important to me. And if it's something that I've never heard about before and all of a sudden something spikes my interest, I will I will go digging. And I, I hope a lot of other people do, too. I think, too, when they do, they're going to find out that they're involved more than they thought they might have been. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's um, there's so much to this world that we don't know. And it's not just our world. It's the other worlds, too. But even on the very black and white level, um, you know, to me, OK, things just boggle my mind. I still can't figure out how the internet works i mean i i know in theory how it works but you know um how does it know that i was just looking at something and then reminding me about that or you know stuff i mean this isn't anything tangible it's programmed tangibly but it doesn't creepy yeah it doesn't work tangibly i mean it's not that easy to figure out i mean before then people were probably thinking about TV signals and satellites and Mm -hmm. before then radio signals. And even, you know, before that, um, the Morse code thing with the tele, not teletype, but yeah. I mean, this whole world and telephones. Yeah. How does that voice happen? There are so many things that I want to know. And for the longest time it was, how do they get records with a needle, you know, how do they record a record, a vinyl record? They put a needle down and voices come out of it and go into this inanimate piece of vinyl? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm still wondering about that. <laughs> Inve- inventions are so, they're m- miraculous, and I think that so much more is coming. I'm just, I just worry sometimes that we're so, we're moving so fast that, um, we could be our own and I, you know, I don't, I know that's probably not true, but I mean, it's just scary how fast uh, technology moves. I think we, I think they, well, they say it's like, uh, like we didn't do any improvements for, and then all of a sudden it's doubled every or tripled every year or something. Mm -hmm. I forget what they say. Yeah. Yeah. No, it really is kind of amazing. The world that we live in and, and, some of us just don't have the wherewithal to even think about it. We're just happy in the mundane world, but but there's so much more else out there, and you don't have to believe in everything. But it just it it in, invigorates you. It nourishes your mind. I mean, it it nourishes your soul. So, yeah, yeah. And the, and the good thing too with with uh, your Kali Wobbles book, and then your new one that you just wrote, and then my three months to change. Um, and then a couple of the others that I've written, um, it gives people um, a relaxation period, you know, mm-hmm. to pull away from the so heavily processed information into yeah. something that's more, um, you know, where you can really pull back and just enjoy some of the technology. Yeah, that's hard yeah. for a lot of people to do. Yeah. 
but it, it's I, I think it's really important to keep learning and keep asking questions. You know, when mm-hmm. people say, "Okay, I've got a really stupid question for you," never a stupid question. Exactly, it's stupid is the stupidity is not in asking. <laughs> you know, and besides never- that, I never have the answer anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I vacillate. It depends on what <laughs> it's about. But no, but I welcome people asking questions because that's the only way that they're going to learn and, and the only way that they're going to know. Well, it stretches us too because, you know, like, yeah. you know, you don't know. Sometimes you don't know what you think until somebody else puts it into words. And then you look at it and go, hmm, okay, this is how that fits in or this doesn't fit at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ceiling Cat just found a, an article and she put it in the chat room. Um, and it says every black hole contains another universe. Cool. Mm-hmm. That I, makes be- sense. I definitely believe that. I've been watching Star Trek for years. <laughs> yes. Look out for those black holes. Get away yeah. from them with warp yeah. speed. Yeah. I mean, really run. But yeah, I mean, see, there's just so much thing. We're talking and all this stuff. All this stuff is coming up. Um, right. Food for thought. Just. And we're not, so that means that all of us who believe in the sci fi are no longer the crazies. No, we may, some of us be the geeks in certain aspects <laughs> yeah, we're of geeks. it. Yeah, yeah well, okay. I, I, I wear I'm, that proudly. I'll be a Whovian. That, that's a cool geek. You yeah. know, not, not like the comic book geeks. They're, they're, they're different, but <laughs> <laughs> Whovian geeks that. are better. Yeah, they're, they're easier. All right. Now we're going to go into, um, a couple of other things, um, and one of them because, see, I everybody, I've been put under a gag order pretty much about what the new edition of the Witch's Oracle deck is going to be. Um, I know what it's going to be. I'm jumping up and down, clapping and doing cartwheels, um, but I haven't been able to say much because it's not ready to come out yet not you know it's not going to be forever but i mean it's just not tomorrow so i kind of put diane on the spot earlier because i told her or i asked her actually if she would say some of the things that i cannot (laughs) about the deck because it's i'm i'm really giddy happy with it well what i can tell you it's gonna be great (laughs) Spoken like um, a true editor. Yeah. I I love it. I love it. I, I I'm just so excited about it. The people that are working on it are super excited about it too. Are they? I, oh my god. And um people are talking about it and it's just it, it, there's big excitement going on about this deck coming out. And not just the deck, the book. Um the whole at the box, everything is going to be uh bigger and better and Baby, it's great. <laughs> All right. Well, let, let me let me drop a name because mm-hmm. people that listen to Stirring the Cauldron know this name. Um, his name is Nicholas Pearson. And Nicholas Pearson has been on my show several times talking about um, stones and crystals. And just to give him a plug in general, he's got a brand new book out called Stones for the Goddess. And it, it, you know, very cool because um, he's a little out of the broom closet now, too. So um, re- and he's going to be on my show in a few weeks. So if anybody's really interested um, in Stones and Nicholas, because he always does a great job. Um, he did something for this new deck that obviously has something to do with Stones and Crystals. Now, you know, we're not throwing Stones in with the deck. But, um, well, he wrote a chapter. I can say that. He wrote a chapter. And then he did something else that is absolutely amazing in conjunction with the incantations that go along with the cards. Let's just say this. You know, when you when you use Marla's deck now, it's fabulous, and you can get exactly what you need. In the new deck, it's going to jump off at you because it's going to look different and it's going to give you more and you're going to love it. I, I can, I can't say anything else, but you're going to love it. it. It's so you're frustrating. It. Yeah. Cause it, it's, there's more information, there's more everything, but just 
think of think of stones and crystals and then use your imagination and and it'll come to fruition um and we have more of Anya Khan. You're going to be surprised in some of she, that, too. She did um, a couple of new cards, yes. Some new cards, and um, it's it's just a new presentation. You're going to love it. Yeah. So um, I we don't know exactly when it'll be out. Maybe spring, maybe mid-year. Um, we, we just have to wait and see on that because we just I just finished all the final things that I needed to do as far as No, choosing. you haven't. No, you haven't. Oh, I haven't. Okay. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> There's more yet, but um, I, I kind of looked at some stuff and, and made some decisions on a couple of things that pleased me no end. So I guess I've got, oh, well, I already did the book, Galley. Hmm, I wonder what you've got. No, you haven't, done the, you haven't done the book, Galley. I mean, you've given it to me, but you haven't seen anything. Well, no, no, I haven't seen, no. I so you got to go through that whole process yet. Oh, okay. Okay, that's not a big deal because I think I cleaned everything up the last time. Huh, I hope. Um, <laughs> people think publishing is easy. It's not. It's not. Um, it's not. It's it's complex. And especially then, too, with a product and a book because, you know, the booklet that goes with the, with the deck is pretty comprehensive. Mm-hmm. And so there's a whole lot in there. Um, to do so we're we're doing we're going over cards we're going over yeah it is oh cats we might be living in a black hole yeah we might be living in a black hole and sometimes editing is like living in a black hole isn't it (laughs) (laughs) it can be worse on you worse on you because you get all the the stupid stuff to edit and then it's exciting though it's exciting and um you know, it's just, you're going to have a blast when it comes out, and everybody's going to love it. And not that your your other one is still available and yeah. still very very timely, and okay. to to use that in the interim would be a really good thing. Yeah, but this this new one, um, yeah, it's stuff that you can't get on the old deck. But the old deck, is, as you said, it's new, it's timely, and it, it's it's great. But um, you're going to be blown away. Um, yep. I, I showed the secret and everybody knows Scott Michaels. I showed the secret to Scott Michaels. I told you I did that, Dinah, because, you know, yeah. he's, he's yeah. got a tight upper lip. Um, and he loves the original deck, which surprised me because t- um, Scott rolls his eyes about everything. But he, he pulls a card for himself every morning and this and that. So when I got this, I, I said, so what do you think of this? And I sent him the, the, the copy, the, the, the everything. And he was totally blown away. He can't wait. He says, you're coming to the shop. As soon as that deck is out, we're going to do an, a, an event here. You know, I mean, he absolutely loved that new edition. He thought, he thought it was really well done. And, and you know, uh, Nicholas has a new fan now. So It's going to be great. You're going to have fun with it. It is. So just, you know, watch my Facebook page. Um or if you're not on Facebook, and a lot of people aren't, you can go to my website, marlabrooks.com, and look at the Oracle Deck page, because there will be updates there. Um, right now, there's pictures of some of the cards in the deck, not the new ones. i got to put those in there um, eventually. But, um, yeah, just, and it, it's really, I'm really amazed, because people from all over the world, because I can see who goes into my website sometimes, mm-hmm. people from all over the world, Make that their first stop. You can see what what door they enter, what portal they enter. And a lot, a lot, a lot of them go through and go immediately to the Oracle Deck page. So the Oracle Deck, really, people worldwide like it. And I'm really surprised. I'm happy. I'm thrilled. But I just don't, you know, I guess it's word of mouth or something. But it's really amazing. And that's very cool. So anyway, just, you know, watch the, watch the, Facebook or watch the website and you'll find out more. And I will, when I get the go ahead, we'll drop some more hints and I'll probably get to spill the beans, you know, just as the deck comes out or just prior to, you know, like two days. As soon, as, soon as it goes uh, onto our website and into our catalog, you'll be able to um, take pre-orders. Oh, okay. That's and good. I'll let you know when that is. Okay. That's good. I appreciate it. Thank you. But it's it's really exciting. And so what what else is going on with you? Anything um any 
more new books coming out. Well, well, actually, just right now, tell everybody where they can find you and your books, because you've got a lot, a lot of them. Well, if you go to roseberrybooks.com, www.roseberrybooks.com, you'll see everything I have. Uh, For this new book, Three Months to Change, there is uh, a sample chapter one there in audio. You can get this book in print, in Kindle, and in audio. Um, So I'm excited about that. It's put out by Visionary Living Publishing, and that would be at visionarylivingpublishing.com. Uh, it's um, there's some pictures on there. The, I think the, I think do I have some interviews on there? There's there's a lot of things. Plus all the other projects that I have done, uh, some of my ghost book uh, materials, some of my UFO and aliens. I've got some uh, audio books that I've recorded myself uh, that are related to the paranormal. That that are a lot of fun. Anyway, it's got a whole bunch of stuff on my website that you can play with and take samples too. So that's roseberrybooks.com. Yeah. And you're also on Facebook and you're I'm all on Facebook. Place. And um, if anybody is interested in Schiffer or Red Feather, is there? Yes. Uh, Schifferbooks.com uh, or Red Feather MBS, mind, body, uh, will give you um, some of the, different things that are available. Uh, You might want to look at Ben and Paul Eno's uh, book, um, let's see, it's Behind the Paranormal. That's the one that really exposed me to this multiverse theory. That's on there. Of course, all of Marla's ghost books and her um, original, which is Oracle, uh, is on there, uh, ready for you to purchase. Of course, all these things are available on Amazon as well. I think that's, I think that's about it. All right. Well, I've got a cre- really brief, brief announcement that <clears throat> next week uh, there will be no archive show. Um, we're doing two hours with um, Scott Michaels on Valentine's Day all about, and it's not an anti-Valentine's show as much as a very interesting one, about tragical Hollywood love stories. Um, you know, Scott knows where the bodies are and, and how to dig them up and all the stories that go along with it. So we're going to start at 8 p.m. Eastern, 8 to 10. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not used to the 8 p.m. yet. Um, and so it'll be just a live show for two hours. And I hope everybody joins in because you'll probably be full of candy and flowers and, you know, too much love and light. So you might want to hear some little odd, gruesome tales and, you know, some interesting stuff. So that's um, 8 to 10 Eastern next Thursday night with Scott Michaels. So we are out of time. We went we went by pretty quick. Dinah, thank you, thank you, thank you for um, sticking around and 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 writing your books because I love them and um, talking about the multiverse because now I know a whole lot more than I did before we started. Thank you for having me. And stay put. Don't hang up when we're done. But thank you everybody for listening in as well. And until next week, everyone, blessed be and merry meet again. Good night. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. Please join us again next week at the same time for another great guest and more cauldron stirring. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without explicit permission is strictly prohibited. Copyright 2018. The Path of the Goblin King by Kevin MacLeod is licensed through incompetech.com.